everyone, in this video we're going to do a video to see the difference between an HDR photo and a pseudo HDR photo. If you don't know what the differences are, what they are is an HDR is one where we have got three different exposures, so three different photos, best shot in RAW, and you use your uh, HDR software to edit them into an HDR photo. A pseudo HDR is when you've taken one photo in RAW, and you've made three copies of it, but of different exposures in the editing suite afterwards. So let's see what we've got here. I've just opened up Lightroom and I've got this photo which I took on a recent walk. And it is kind of roughly in the middle exposure area where I want it to be. So what I need to do to do a pseudo HDR is I need to create a couple of virtual copies. And the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure this photo is as flat and as dull as, board, as as possible. So I'll bring the blacks down to zero, I'll bring the contrast down to zero, and the brightness also down to zero. So this is the middle exposure. The second photo, which was the same photo, same again, uh, the blacks, the contrast, and the brightness. This time we'll bring the exposure down by 1.5. Five. Let's see that. And then on the third one, same thing, but we'll change the exposure so it's up by 1.5. And now we'll go and export these three photos and stick them into Photomatix. But just before we do that, what we'll do, we'll also uh, do some noise reduction. Whenever you increase the brightness or the exposure in post, as in, in your Lightroom, then you artificially add noise. So I'm just going to make sure that the colour and the, a little bit of luminance noise is, uh, is reduced. Uh, and we'll just sync that for all of them. And then we export, we want to export them in as best a size as we can, so quality at 100, but not as JPEG, I'm going to send them out as TIFFs, and 16-bit ones, so these are massive. Okay, and what you see, we've got the images now, they're onto the desktop, and if we look, and if we look at the size of them, the get info, the, they are huge, 126 megabytes each, massive, massive files. So let's op open up the photo HDR generating software that you use and import the three TIFFs, one, two, three. Now, whenever you select the photos, it will say, oh, hold on, this is exactly the same photo. It's got the same name. Can you just check that the, uh, the exposure differences are correct? So I'm saying, yes, it is plus two, it is minus two, that's absolutely fine. And because there is no uh, ghosting, because uh, reduced noise, yeah, we'll keep that. Reduce that chromatic aberrations, yeah, we'll keep that. But we don't need to align sources, so it'll be a much quicker editing process here. Okay, and that's the photo come up, and it looks very dark, doesn't look all that great, but that's when we need to click on the button saying tone mapping. And bingo! Well, well, there, there it goes. Okay, not bad actually. Uh, so here is them side by side. The one on the left uh, here is one which was the real HDR. The one on the right is the pseudo HDR. And oh, I must say that the the Canon 5D Mark II sensor really has done a good job here. So I'm just going to play around with the saturation, the levels, and the curves in just now, and see if I can get it as close to the full HDR. As with the pseudo HDR as possible. Okay, so here are the shots uh, now. So in the middle is the HDR or the pseudo HDR where I have just taken it straight out of Photomatix and done nothing with it. The one on the right, so that is the same photo but I've just put it in Lightroom and done a little bit more editing, just upping the contrast, enhancing the clarity, maybe changing the sharpness of certain bits as well. And the one on the left is the Photomatix one where it was the three three HDR photos, as in the overexposed, underexposed, and uh, middle exposed, correctly exposed. Um, okay, so they've all got their own benefits and and kind of pros and cons. Middle one, we'll get rid of that just now because that's kind of an unedited pseudo HDR shot, so that's not really what we want to look at. So here, I must say I'm very impressed with how close both of them are in terms of the quality that you get. But they both have their goods and bad points. The pseudo HDR, you'll see that the sky is still blown out. However, certain areas like this area here is still nice and sharp. We can zoom right in and we can see the individual branches going on in there. Meanwhile, in the real HDR, because there is it was hand movement and you know tiny bits of wind and camera shake, is not as sharp 
as this one. But it's actually not bad at all, really. Okay, you can't complain about it. Photomatics really has upped its game with how well it's able to correct ghosting and, and uh, camera movement and all that kind of stuff. If you are shooting a situation where there is lots of movement, if there's wind, or if you don't have a tripod, like I did in this shop, then maybe going with the pseudo HDR is an okay choice. Normally I'd always suggest definitely go with real HDR, get those three, four, five exposures, that will make things better. However, here, whew, it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. So I hope that helps out, gives you a little tips of how to do this pseudo HDR and how close you can get to real HDR photo with just uh, editing it in the correct way. Hope that helps. Cheers. Bye bye.